And uh, I understand uh, we now have Farah Alim, who is uh, the, well, he's a former deputy speaker in the National Assembly, who is vo joining us now via video link. Good morning, Farah Alim, Honorable Farah Alim. Good to have you with, uh, good to have you this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you, my friend? Very well, thank Good. you. And great to have you. We're just reviewing what's making headlines in the dailies. And at this point in time, actually, it's good that you're on because we are looking at uh, page six of the standard. It has that story where Duale and Washiali top the list of Ruto's allies facing the chop in the parliamentary group meeting expected today. Of course, this is on the backdrop of what we saw happen in the Senate. And we saw the majority leader and the chief whip lose their positions from Jubilee. But now inside sources have it that we may have the National Assembly uh, Majority Leader Adan Duale also face the same fate. And this is uh, believed to be part of the purge by Jubilee. Maybe just to get your comments and your weighing in on what is happening in Jubilee and whether you'd expect this to happen today. Well, <clears throat> parliamentary business is extremely critical to any government. And if it's the, the ruling uh, administration, basically, you, you cannot allow where there's going to be split loyalties in there. So it's very natural. Anytime you have this kind of a revolution, it is total. You don't, you don't leave anybody. And, uh, and it is expected. It's happened before. If you remember, I mean, those of you who are, who are young might have read about it. We had the... the, the the traitor issue in 1983, when Charles Mjonjo was the Minister for Constitutional Affairs mm -hmm. and a former Attorney General who was one of the, the serious uh, locks in the chain for Moi's ascendancy to power. But when there was a competition between the two of them on the relevance, and Moi decided that he was the only man who was going to be in charge and he would not have a co-president in that place or anybody who is likely to think of taking over that position, and he got rid of him. But then he went ahead and got rid of all the lieutenants of, uh, of Charles Nyonjo. That included uh, the late Olo Tip Tip, the late Gigi Karyuki, mm. the late Joseph Kamboto. Many of them were, had to be purged. So in, in politics, you don't take prisoners. And, and particularly in competitive uh, politics like this, you have no option. I mean, the loyalty of uh, uh, the, the, the leadership of parliament was, was very, very clear. It was uh, pretty much uh, uh, on from the from the jubilee from the root side of the divide. Right. And what you understand is that uh, uh, the, the deputy, the number two in in all administrations. Uh, I remember one time uh, the late uh, Andre Gromiko, who was for a very long time the the minister for foreign affairs for the Soviet Union, and later became the uh, um, a vice president, something like that, or the deputy to the. the he was saying that is a position you need to have somebody who can sit on a block of ice and, and with his pants down and still feign that you're enjoying the, the, the leisure. So the vice, the deputy to a CEO of a country is one in which uh, you have to behave like Mark Pence. Mark Pence has got somebody called Trump, who is uh, pretty much an idiot when you look at it overall in the, in the world right now, the way they see it. Mm -hmm. But look at Mark Pence and see the loyalty, the level of loyalty. He does not want to upstage his, uh, his boss. But, but unfortunately, our good old brother, the, former, the current the deputy president, did not read those signs. So it was very clear. It was clear was that, 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 that this was coming. Oh, okay, and, and, and I mean, it is understandable that a party leader at some point needs to streamline his party, and especially for the president who is currently the parties, uh, you know, sitting in terms of uh, they're the ones ruling. But question is, is this coming a little bit too late? Should he have done this earlier? Because with the Big Four agenda, it's hardly, um, I mean, it's been one thing pushing one thing or the other, looking at the BBI as well. Would you say this is coming a little bit late uh, in the day for the president to be doing this? To be honest you, I, I don't quite think. I think to give credit where credit is due for a very long time, he has been telling his number two and the folks around him, whatever you want to call them, Tanga Tanga, uh, that look let us focus on my agenda let us focus on my legacy mm. don't focus on politics and unfortunately they never read the signs mm. so so, so uh, he has to he has to what you call uh, uh, get into the chopping board right now one to try and uh, salvage his own uh, legacy mm. two 
to try and usher in a new, a new what you call dispensation into the country because this country has been divided. Every five years we have, we have a total war. We have mm. losers and winners. And we're now looking at the how to make that inclusive so that we don't, we don't, we don't have the problems you've had for God knows since the, the, the multi-party section 2A was repealed. So, so he wants to leave a legacy. He wants to leave uh, a system that essentially unites the country. And I don't think he got that. That's right. why he went his way to go and have a handshake with his uh, political rival and arch enemy, uh, if, if you could say in terms of the political terms. Right. But, but that's, that's exactly, I think the signs were there. And anybody who has uh, an understanding of the political history of all, all administrations, because the number two is one area that you have to just be there to do exactly what your number one wants you to do. It's, it's a very uh, uh, unsavory kind of a, a place. A you position. can't accept yeah, yes, I, you can't accept yourself. Right, as, and I guess, as, I, I, I guess number two is supposed to play number two until you're given the authority and, you know, uh, the go-ahead now to run the race. And uh, maybe that has not played out too well, but we'll wait and see. And, and what do you think of, uh, on the nation, we have uh, the nation asking a question, is Uhuruto Kamaredari back? Uh, looking at the body language yesterday, and there was also rumors just before yesterday that the president and the deputy president had probably had a meeting. And of course, politics being politics, nothing would surprise us completely. Do you think there could be something cooking there? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The possibility is there. I mean, uh, but, but to be honest to you, uh, if you remember Daniel Arapoy as a vice president to, to, to Kenyatta, uh, those of you who remember uh, that history, that is exactly how, how a number two is supposed to behave. And, and, uh, but you see, the difference is that in the, in the political uh, pact that was done in 2013 between the two guys, it was a co-presidency, more or less, where there was... The two sides came together and, uh, you know, offered to share power. And essentially, it came with something that is not traditional at all. Uh, the body language, I don't know, frankly. I don't, I don't think it for one moment. You, in politics, you don't go out there, injure your colleague, and then uh, later on say, okay, let's have it uh, going right. And when the moment he has the executive powers, then it happens. Uh, you, you, you will have a problem. Mm. Uh, enough, very common, the number of uh, CEOs, uh, who did not sit their number twos very well and eventually ended up again uh, helping them to become number one. They, they, they bore the brunt of the retaliation and, and essentially it became very, very bad. Uh, that's what happened in, in Botswana and a number of countries uh, where the number two was, uh, first of all, uh, 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 pretty much put in his place. But mm. the, the number one decided, well, what does it take? I might as well help him now become, at uh, the moment he comes in, the real vendetta goes now to, to, to settle scores. Right. So in Poland, you don't injure somebody and then allow him to have again uh, that executive, that total executive power. It's going to be directed at you in, in a ferocious uh, manner. So right. I doubt it very yeah, <laughs> I doubt it very much. Whatever okay. the body language is, he's shuffling a lot of things. Mm -hmm. it's, going to be a new, it's going to be a new dispensation. A new dispensation is a parliamentary system, by the way. Uh, most likely. And, and uh, what is, what is the issue? I mean, in this new dispensation, uh, would it be taken for granted that the president is going to go home? No. Once you have a new constitution that has different, uh, uh, a different what do you call parameters, then, then uh, the, the, you don't go back. It's not retrospective. You don't, you don't uh, say that, oh, you have already taken your two terms. But the whole time issue will, will become irrelevant if it becomes a, a parliamentary system with the prime minister, the CEO of the country. Okay. Uh, if you remember very well, when Moi mm. we got the, the repeal of Section 2A, we mm. also had a few changes in the, in the Constitution through Parliament. Uh, and Moi asked for his two new terms. Uh, basically, he says that this Constitution takes effect, and I become subject to the Constitution from now. It does not go back. There is no retrospective. You don't, you don't go back, backwards in, 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 in side terms. So right. we okay. don't know. We don't know what we're into, and it's going to be a pretty much uh, a very wide thing. And, and to be very honest with you, if you're asking me, my very sincere, uh, uh, one person who has been a very vocal uh, proponent of the parliamentary system with the prime minister as the CEO of the country. Right. I, 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 the mistake we made when we got this new constitution, the, 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 um, you know, this, uh, in, the, in the 10th parliament, when we got this new dispensation, we had two serious proponents of the dispensation that time, which was Kibaki and Raila. 
-hmm. and, and, and we had two, one vocal opponent, the most vocal opponent, who is the current deputy, deputy. And we had Uhuru, who was more or less like a watermelon. And most people believe that he was not for the constitution. Now, when we got the operationalization or the implementation of the constitution, the two who were the major proponents went home. Kibaki went home, and Raila more or less went home. And you had the two people who, who opposed the constitution one way or the other, either very vociferously in the case of, the, of, of Ruto and a little bit lukewarm in the case of Uhuru, uh, expected to implement that constitutional dispensation. It will not work. That's why we, our, our, our constitution, which was uh, promulgated in 2010, uh, frankly, did not see much uh, of, of goodwill from the current administration. So if there's going to be a new dispensation uh, through the BBI and the process and the referendum, which of course the president alluded last time, mm. it's only fair that the two guys who are the proponents of this thing are going to be there, if not for any other reason, to midwife the system for at least another five years. Okay. To see and, and, in, in the total implementation, yes. All so right. And part of... Part of the speech that the president gave yesterday, of course, was in regards to that. So I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get into that in the next segment of uh, the program. But I just want us to just still focus on the dailies. And on page 12 of the, the standard today, we also have uh, the story there of, um, well, it's titled, You've Betrayed Us for Long, Leaders Tell Ryla. This is to do with the evasive, or what has been termed as the evasive lawyer unity. We know what happened to Ford, Kenya. Maybe your comments as to what this might be given that Ford Kenya, you know, was seen to do something that was unprecedented to actually remove their own party leader and whether that uh, stands the test of time remains to be seen. But there's an accusing finger pointing at the former prime minister according to these leaders, Wetangula and Budabadi. Well, I don't know. If, uh, frankly speaking, the Western... The Western uh political environment is is a pretty uh, tricky one because uh, David Ren, my friend, good friend, David Ren for the presidency one time as a former uh, vice president, even if it's for a very short period of time. Uh, and Raila, who claims uh, both lineages, of Raila, who claims that he is originally a Luya, but basically assimilated and, and, and more or less uh, uh, a Luo for, for all intents and purposes right now, is his ancestry, basically has always had that very powerful, uh, uh, and including also the, his father, mm. the powerful influence in Luya land, which, which essentially cannot be taken away. I mean, uh, when Mudabadi ran, ran for the presidency and Raila ran for the presidency, Raila literally picked everything, including the members of parliament and the bulk of the votes. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the, when it comes to Raila, I don't know of anybody else, but when it comes to Raila, uh, the so-called Luya unity itself becomes uh, a little bit uh, questionable in the sense that Raila plays the Luya and also the Luo. Uh, so so the, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if he is uh, pretty much in one way or the other involved in these things. And he has a massive support in there. I mean, the, the biggest uh, county in the country in terms of population is, uh, is the Kakamea County, where Opranya is, and, and that's his, his, his deputy. So, so and you look at the uh, ODM right now and, and see the rank and file of the leadership of the ODM, including the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, it's, it's possible to have that back and forth. I mean, uh, the, the contestation uh, for, for the kingpin of the Luya uh, community itself has always had Raila at the center of his, of his, and his father also, in addition to it. Because when I first came into parliament, the seventh parliament, which was in 1992, uh, we had we had a massive number of members of parliament coming from there, including the, the former vice president Omar Wakidana, who were in 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 Fort Kenya, mm -hmm. which essentially was the Jaramogi's party at that time, uh, which I was also there. Uh, so in in a sense, uh, this back and forth uh, 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 labelings and everything else within the Luya and and, and, and the Jaramogi family is, is clearly one thing that uh, is, is is there. It's been with us and it's bound to be with us. And, and I don't know how 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 anybody would ever to be able out. to okay. uh, uh, ever achieve uh, what you call a, a powerful, uh, very majority majority based uh, Luya union that does not have in one way or the other a powerful mm. influence of the Ramogi family. Maybe after Ayla is no longer in the scene of the of the, all right. of the politics. All, all right. All right. The West, Western Kenya was was called the 
uh, during the colonial time, the Kavirondo, basically, or the West. It was, mm. was literally one identity one way or the other, yes. All right, and uh, maybe as we wind up the newspaper review, just your thoughts. The president has also indicated severally that we could be reopening the economy, and of course, starting with schools and places of worship. So your thoughts on this, or maybe some of the things that must be in place. Kenya has now hit 2,000 confirmed positive cases of COVID-19. Your thoughts on what needs to be in place before we begin to reopen the economy? I think what we need to do more than anything else is to seek if we can get a um, difficult thing, it's a total, a total order, but uh, compulsory testing literally for the whole country. Mm -hmm. And if you go towards that, then we know how bad our position is. You've got 2,000 out of probably 20,000. I don't know what the latest figure is for those who are tested. Uh, you never know with the rest of the of the, of the country, and and this is. Uh, but my one thing I can tell you is that uh, we just will have to live with that. I mean, the economy is so bad. Uh, people are people are literally questioning where, whether it, we would we would die from hunger and starvation and inability to earn a decent living, uh, or we're going to die from COVID uh, 19. Nineteen, right? So, uh, so I. I think many, many, including the most powerful economies in the world, are saying, no, let's open up this thing. Maybe with a bit of luck, we might develop hard immunities. People will die. There's no question about that. Many are going to, to, to contract these things. Uh, of course, with all, the, with the, with all the, 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 the precautions that need to be taken. So I want to say, I think it's not a bad idea for us to open up the economy in this country because we just don't have any other option. We are a third world poor country strapped with a very... Uh, big, what do you call, uh, crippling uh, debt, internal and external, and, 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 and God knows what's happening to the, you know, on the rank on file of Kenyans, and, and companies we relocate, they will close, and it's going to be terribly bad. So I think we need to have a serious advice from the Ministry of Health, go for the total testing, go for a lot of self-isolation in the cases where they're going to, when not less than, more than 70% of the people will develop those side immunities because ours is a young population, Right. And, and although this thing, this thing affects everybody, uh, uh, the, the, many of the young population are basically asymptomatic. Mm. Uh, so, so, so the, they don't even, they don't even uh, they display the symptoms. They get it and it just goes. Although the fear is that this is going to be like flu, which means you can get it and get it again and again and again. But I think right now, uh, I think it was fair. I, I support entirely the president's position. The, the reopening of the economy. All right. Uh, no, you, you can't maintain a total lockdown in this country. We're going to be fished. Right. We, we do. The economy is gone to hell. And because this is, it's a pandemic, it's global. You don't run to somebody else to take care of you and help you. Not like when we had Ebola, when we had uh, uh, pro, what do you call um, uh, HIV AIDS uh, prominence in Africa, where you could run to the West and get a lot of support from here and there. No, no. Everybody is, is affected and every economy is, is completely shattered. Mm. So nobody can come to the aid of the other. The fire is all over the you know, four corners of the world. So I think it's, it's fair we take that position, but with a lot of precautions. We have uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Health advisories in schools and the social distancing and the, everything that needs to be taken into consideration. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, we cannot afford to keep our economy closed any longer. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Honorable Farah Malim. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'd like you to weigh in on the, the you know, Madaraka Day speech and where we are as a country 57 years after independence and hear what your take is on that. So we're going to take a short break right here on Morning Express and we'll be back with the Honorable Farah Malim to just weigh in on the speech given yesterday by the president and his thoughts on where we are as a country also you participate via the question that we've asked 57 years after independence what do you think ails kenya 57 years after independence what do you think ails kenya and we'll uh, be reading through your comments as we carry on with the show for now we're going to take a short break but do stay with us we we'll see you on the other side of the break where we weigh in on the president's speech on madaraka day yesterday and possibly what our take is on that and also the take from honorable farah for now we take that break <laughs> 